One of the challenges is if you ask uh, someone who's used to using a set of tools, whether it's a cardiologist with a catheter, a urologist with a stone basket, a, a gynecologist with a particular device, we are comfortable using what we use. And frequently, uh, we're not so good at stepping out of the current paradigm and saying, you know what, yes, let's think differently. You want to talk to experts, but you also uh, want to talk to some relatively naive, uh, perhaps trainees, who might say, yeah, you know, I don't, I too don't understand why we do it that way. So take advantage of the training paradigm. They're frequently uh, young people of, this, of similar age, uh, smart, inquisitive, and so that's a, a wonderful opportunity to dig in. And again, to plug the nurses and the OR techs, they know a lot. Uh, and it would be crazy not to take advantage of them. And some are more effusive, some are quieter, and it's uh, just a matter of finding the ones that uh, are helpful. And uh, offering to take someone to buy a cup of coffee afterwards is also a pretty good strategy. Experts uh, are useful uh, with regards to, is this a common problem? Uh, what, are, what, uh, what are current approaches to treatment? Uh, Non-experts are also useful. So we've had the situation where we've had a surgeon in one field make a really important contribution in a very different field. They know enough, but not so much that they've been socialized to believe that something can't be done. And the early field of laparoscopic surgery, for example, was a good example where no one, it, it, lap, laparoscopy was only used for very simple operations like tubal ligation. And a enterprising surgeon said, well, what if we looked up instead of down into the pelvis? Uh, and laparoscopic cholecystectomy is now probably one of the most common operations done in the world.